Hello all and uh, welcome to another episode. Uh, let's get straight to the questions. Question number 61. So basically uh, it is about Operation Polo and uh, it is during uh, the time just after independence and when all these uh, states were being integrated uh, into the Union of India. So this period of time is uh, very very important and uh, you should particularly read what all uh, differences were there and how uh, this Union of India came into existence and of course the role of uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel in all this is very very significant and uh, your related concepts you should also read about uh, this nation building, state building and what is a nation and what is a country, how it is dif uh, different from each other, these words and jargons, all these you must study. So in this question, uh, it was about uh, Hyderabad, but you should also read about all the other uh, princely states and um, how they were integrated and um, who played key roles, what were the mo movements and what were the um, actions taken. Uh, initiatives taken and all those things. So it's a very important period of time which should, uh, which should be read in detail. Now moving on to the next question, Coriolis uh, effect. So it's a, a question of a basic general science and um, again back to the basics, NCRTs if you have read them you should be uh, dealing with this problem. Uh, some of the options uh, if you don't know the answer, then how to deal with such questions? So if you look at point number one, Coriolis effect is uh, zero at equator, so which is true. So the second, the probability that the second is correct is more because if it's uh, zero at equator, it may be with uh, increasing latitude, it will increase. So at the as you reach the poles, it will perhaps be the highest. So you know, so one if one is correct, if you know one is correct, then you should also uh, guess that 2 is also correct. So in such way, uh, sometimes we have to deal with objective questions. Uh, it is always better to know things in uh, much detail, uh, but if you don't know, then this deductive logic can be used in certain cases. So in this, uh, the fourth statement is correct. So the answer will be C. Moving on to the next question, 63, it's about uh, Chinggis Khan uh, and when he invaded uh, India. So. Uh, when you go to uh, medieval history, uh, there were a lot of invasions uh, made on the uh, Indian subcontinent and all these are very very important. Who was the Indian ruler at that time? What were uh, the developments during his period of Ryan? All those things are very very important. And uh, of course, these uh, direct questions from medieval history may come in the objective type paper, but understanding how things have progressed uh, to understand basically the present, we need to know the past. So that is why this all these medieval history, ancient history is very, very important. So in this case, the answer will be Ilkutmesh, uh, but you should be knowing uh, what all happened during the reign of all others as well, what is significant. Uh, there were many interesting things that happened during uh, the reign of Mohammed bin Tughlaq and uh, uh, other rulers as well. So you should know every ruler, his contribution, uh, what were the good, great developments and what you know went wrong also. So that also in case of many ruler, ruler, uh, rulers, uh, it happened and uh, that is why uh, this uh, medieval history also becomes more important and these are Again, very uh, direct questions as in it will save time because if you see the question, if you know immediately, you know, within one minute, you can deal with this question, move to the next one and give the saved time to the questions where you don't know the answer and where you have to use deductive logic. So all these uh, direct factual questions are very, very um, good opportunity to save time and to score. Next question, uh, 64 is about Darwin Finches. Now, hopefully you know about Charles Darwin and uh, the theory of evolution. And uh, so basically these uh, Darwin Finches, when we use this phrase, it refers to a group of species of birds. And uh, it was used as a, if you see uh, them now, of course many, many of them are uh, very endemic to certain places. 
and uh, it was used as a model to show basically so that we can relate to evolution. So if you look at all these species of birds, so there is a similarity and uh, how uh, this uh, growth uh, has happened uh, into several new features have come up uh, because of uh, evolution. So it is uh, the model of evolution is uh, basically easy to understand. So uh, that is the uh, reference here. Moving on to the next question, direct question, general knowledge, general logic basically, general science, why glycol is added to aviation fuel, aviation gasoline. So, uh, such type of questions are also fairly common when um, certain elements are added, why you know something is added to the LPG, why something is added to the diesel, why something is added to the petrol. So all those things you should know, this is essentially, in this case, it's to prevent freezing of petrol and uh, in all other cases also you should know why certain special ingredients are added, why rubber is added in, uh, sorry, why sulphur is added in rubber, you know, uh, that is also a question. In LPG also we uh, add something so that the smell uh, is easily detectable uh, if there is, in case there is a leak uh, in the gas cylinder. So all those things. Uh, are very uh, every day we uh, face them but we and we know them also but then we don't uh, tr try to find out the reason behind so 66 uh, question number is again a direct question from uh, basic uh, biology uh, the uh, structure of a uh, animal cell and uh, these are very basic things if you uh, recollect we study plant cell we study animal cell structure we compare them and all those things. So in that we study uh, DNA basically is also found in uh, other than mostly in the nucleus but also in the mitochondria. Now 67 question uh, is about uh, the Gandhian, uh, basically it's about the Gandhian model. Uh, so what uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, 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 the structure uh, if uh, the government was to be in his way, so what would be the structure, what would be the principles or basically let us say what is will be the uh, philosophy of the government so uh, self-sufficiency yes of course he talked about self-sufficiency and how villages should be basically the units of these uh, self-sufficiency so we don't have to uh, depend uh, on uh, any other thing equitable distribution is also true now uh, if you see the option b and d both cannot be true so the answer will be one of them. Uh, so of course he talked about uh, decentralization a lot and uh, empowering the villages in terms of producing at the village level itself. So of course here the wrong uh, one is centralized production uh, because he went for, uh, he advocated decentralized production. Now in this COVID time uh, what we have realized is this is very very important that we decentralize everything and we make all areas self-sufficient because if the linkages are broken let's suppose if there is a lockdown let's suppose if there is a because of natural disaster some road linkage has been broken and things from outside cannot come so it becomes very very difficult more than the disaster the disaster is actually in providing essential commodities so that is why every uh, place, every district in fact, every state should try to be self-sufficient in all the basic uh, materials, uh, food, um, everything, I mean which is the basic necessity of life I think we should go and that is essentially what this uh, Gandhian model is. Now moving on to the next question, 68, the most stable ecosystem. Now uh, when you read the basics of uh, environment, you will read what is a biome what is the ecosystem and so, so you know there's so many related jargons which you should understand and uh, as I have been saying environment has become a very very important part uh, of the questions which are coming and rightly so because that kind of consciousness is required also uh, with the kind of climate change and global warming happening I think the stress everywhere not just in uh, question papers, uh, in everyday life, in every, whenever we are talking, we should talk about environment and all those things. So here, uh, the stable as in, uh, because the changes are uh, slow in that case, so because ocean is such a vast uh, expanse and there are so many species and uh, it's, it's simply huge and we can say the kind of interference which is there in other ecosystems because of, you can say because of human beings, and of course we have reached every nook, of, nook and corner of the uh, oceans as well 
but perhaps uh, not to that uh, intensity and uh, thankfully uh, so here uh, the answer this is, ocean is the most stable ecosystem so you can go with b 69 question is about uh, satya sodak uh, samaj uh, which was uh, established by jyotira phule and uh, if you if you have read modern history properly then um, these kind of uh, uh, movements to improve the status of various classes of the society uh, were uh, coming up during these times and uh, you should read in detail about all these uh, uh, movements and what impact they had and what what were their objectives and who contributed uh, and what change was brought about so because it was uh, for the social transformation it was very very uh, important period in the timeline of uh, Indian his modern history. So in this case, uh, all the statements are correct and uh, the focus uh, uh, on this uh, Kunbi peasantry basically uh, because of uh, uh, all these uh, stratas were considered uh, you know below to the uh, higher classes. So to uh, fight that, uh, it was suggested during these uh, movements that um, if we all, uh, you know, all these uh, classes should be referred to as Maratha because, you know, they are Marathi, uh, they are uh, Marathi speaking and they are from the, that region. So, irrespective, uh, they should be referred as Maratha. So, that Maratha identity started getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, privileges, basically, you can say. And then it got strengthened. More, more, the right word here would be, it got slowly strengthened and the pro process of, uh, strengthening started and unification and uh, uh, it was also uh, the attack was against the um, so called higher classes so he also said um, these statements and uh, then in this case all of this is correct and uh, we should go with d now question number 70 is again uh, about a writ and uh, previous videos also in this very question paper we have discussed another question uh, on co warranto and uh, so basically the point is that this uh, writ related questions are also very common so you should know what are the writs available with the courts and what is the meaning what is the literal meaning and what is in in practical sense how they are used in which cases they apply so here also the all the statements given are perfect and the answer will be a so we have reached uh, now 70 questions and uh, 30 more to go. Uh, hope you are liking uh, this uh, series and uh, try to solve um, as many more questions from other uh, exams as well because this MCS exam has not been conducted very frequently so the repository of question papers is not there. So it makes sense to just solve UPSC questions or nearby if you can find out even from the other states, neighboring states. Uh, uh, of Northeast, uh, this Assam exam and then the other exams, then more or less you understand the pattern of the exam. So you can go with that and uh, uh, keep reading more and more about uh, general GK and uh, specifically state GK and uh, the current affairs which will essentially be the focus of the question paper. So with that we'll end this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, for the remaining questions, keep uh, following this uh, channel and uh, see you in the next video.